I'm Brad Hafford, archaeologist at the University of Pennsylvania, and I'm at the ancient city of Nimrud, but at a very special location within that city. Agatha Christie married archaeologist Max Malawan in September of 1930. Max completed his last season at Ur in March of 1931, then went to work in the north of Iraq and in Syria. Agatha wrote about that time in the 1930s in this book, Come Tell Me How You Live. It's the only one that I know of that she used the last name Malawan. This was built in the 1950s, and it was built for Sir Max Malawan. And he had started digging at the ancient city of Ur way back in the 1930s with Sir Leonard Woolley. And actually from the 1920s, I think he was there early on. And he eventually left and he came to dig in places like Syria and then in northern Iraq. Early in the 1930s, Agatha and Max visited Nimrud. She wrote in her autobiography, I remember Max saying, this is where I would like to dig, but it would have to be on a very big scale. One would have to raise a lot of money, but if I could, this is the mound I would choose out of all the world. He sighed, oh well, I don't suppose it will ever happen. But it did happen around 15 years later, after the Second World War. So he started here in 1949 and had this house built. It's built of mud brick, and then it's got concrete for the roofing. We're gonna take a bit of a tour here. So it is collapsing. You can see that there's no roof up there. In fact, the roof is down here. Lots of this concrete and iron materials, bracing, etc., for the roof. When we left at the end of the first season, we got everything settled for building a house of mud brick, actually on the mound. The bricks were made and laid out to be dried, and the roofing was arranged for. When we came out the following year, we were very proud of our house. There was a kitchen, next to it a long mess room and sitting room, and next to that a drawing office and antique room. We slept in tents. Every now and then there was a terrific dust storm and a wind which came up from nowhere. Immediately we would rush out and hang onto the tents with all our might while all the dust bin lids blew away. We'll go through this door and we'll see a lot of fallen mud brick, I think. You can see that it fell flat. This is kind of interesting for, well, archaeologists to see how mud brick buildings fall down. And this hasn't been that long. I'm not sure that all of it was natural, however. ISIS, Daesh, destroyed a lot of things here at Nimrud. And they may have thought that this was one of the ancient buildings because they ran bulldozers through a nearby one over there. And they may have hit this one as well. So. Don't think it just naturally fell down, at least not completely. We can see how the walls have been plastered with a mud that has also got a lot of this straw in it, just like what the bricks are made of. So this material can be hard to identify in the archeological record because when the bricks fall, they form a kind of soil that is made of the brick material itself. So digging a wall, you're digging through parts of the wall that have fallen. It's all very similar. We'll move on and see a little more. This door I like because it has that arched entryway. See some fallen beams there. That's where most of the damage was done along the front end of this building. Part of the building was expanded just a little bit later, a few years after it was originally built. And it was done so with money from Agatha Christie, who was Max Mellowan's wife. He was quite a bit younger than she was, but she was coming off of her first marriage when she first went to Ur. And she met Max there at Ur. They got married not long after, in 1930. And they eventually ended up here. Agatha really enjoyed the archeological world. And well, she wrote several books that are set in this world. And she wanted yeah, some comforts. By the time she was older, here in the 1950s, she was getting on in her years. She died somewhere in the 1970s. So she put in money to expand the house. And I think that may have been over this way where there's more concrete. I'm not certain of that. A year or two later, we built onto the house, a small office with a desk and a window in front of it through which one could pay the men on payday. And on the other side, 
and epigraphist's desk. Next to this was the drawing office and workroom, with trays of things being repaired. Beyond that again was the usual dog hole in which the wretched photographer had to develop and do loading. Finally, a year or two later still, I petitioned to be allowed to have a small room added on of my own. This I would pay for myself, so for 50 pounds I built on a small square mud brick room, and it was there that I began writing this book. So where exactly her rooms were, I'm not sure because I'd like to know. She actually wrote a number of her late novels here, or at least began them and finished them in England or whatnot. She also began her autobiography here in this building at this ancient city. Now she wasn't just writing here, she was also helping her archaeologist husband to do a number of tasks that related to archaeology. In fact, she took many of the photographs of the artifacts and she cleaned the artifacts. Most famously, she cleaned the ivories. And in her autobiography, she talks about how she used her face cream to make those clean and shine, etc. So, well, let's take one more look at this front part. You can see that I think a bulldozer just drove straight through here and took all of this down. And see how the center beams are all concrete and iron steel. And then in between is all the mud brick. So it's kind of a modern building with some ancient techniques in it, but a lot of modern materials. It's a pretty big complex too, because this would have been the main house where they processed their finds, where they slept and ate. And then there's a compound around here. So you can see we constructed ancient building back there. And then we can see the edges of the actual dig house compound all the way out here. So they had a kind of yard where they could sort pottery and do things like that. So it's a pretty amazing connection to a more modern thing, a mystery writer living and working here with her archeologist husband. So not only do we have this fantastic ancient things, we've also got this, which I just love. I've, I've always liked Agatha Christie's books and I like the idea that I can be right here where she was as well. So in the dig house at Nimrud, Agatha Christie began writing her autobiography. And no doubt she also worked on many of the books that came out in the decade of the 1950s, such as Dead Man's Folly and A Cat Among the Pigeons, etc. In a sense then, Hercule Poirot and Jane Marple both lived in the dig house as well. Hope you enjoyed this tour. I'm Brad Hafford. See you again on Artifactually Speaking. <laughs>